Good morning and God bless you all. This is your friend, Minister Lillian Kobos of Smoldering Wick Ministry. It is Wednesday, May 3rd, brand new month of 2018, and I give glory and honor and praise and thanks to God for this new opportunity that he gives me to come to you today with the word of the Lord that I pray will bless you and strengthen you, that it will teach you something, that it will empower you to walk in newness of life, in the fullness of the life that God has given us through Christ Jesus. And I pray that the Lord will give you ears to hear and a heart to receive this that he wants to tell you today by his spirit. We're going to enter right into the word right away. I don't want to waste anyone's time. And today's portion of scripture comes from the Old Testament book of Lamentations, known also as the excuse me, as the Lamentations of Jeremiah. And it will be coming from Lamentations chapter 3. And I will be reading from verses 22 to verse 28. So if you have a Bible handy, go with me to the Old Testament book of Lamentations, the third chapter. We will be starting at verse 22 and we will read through to verse 28 in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and I am reading from the King James Version. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. And the translation of that 28th and final verse that I'm reading to you. Let him sit alone and keep silence because God has laid it upon him, that yoke in youth referred to in verse 27. May God bless his word more and more and more abundantly. I love that portion of scripture from Lamentations. I actually have it starred in red and underlined because it is a portion of scripture that speaks to me and that ministers to me as a servant of the Lord and as someone who is so conscious of my flesh and so conscious of my failings and so conscious of how much farther I need to go in my walk with the Lord as I'm sure many of you who are listening today are also. And that first verse, verse 22, when it says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not, his mercy fails not. Have you ever stopped to think about those of you who serve the Lord and those of you who may be listening who may not have yet come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, but you have nevertheless thought of all the times in your life, from your youth to the present, where by all rights you should have been dead, or by all rights you should have been in jail, or by all rights you should be lying in a gutter somewhere, and yet you are still here. You're still alive. You're still standing. You're still, you still have some semblance of order in your life. And it is because of the Lord's mercies that you've not been consumed. It is because of the Lord's mercy, because his mercy, his compassion fails not. His compassion is always present. The very next verse, verse 23, tells us they are new every morning. Referring back to his compassion, his mercy. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. 
It is because of God's faithfulness that he is able to give us new mercies every morning. And it's because of those new mercies every morning is that we are not and have not yet been consumed. That we have not yet been destroyed. Because of those mercies, because of God's compassion. Even on the lost, as the Lord waits for you who may not be serving Christ, those of you who may not yet have come to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, it is because of His compassions that you have not yet been consumed because He is waiting for you. He is waiting for you. Yes, you who are listening right now, who are lost and undone, who don't know the Lord, who have never confessed Christ as Savior, who maybe have never even heard until today that there is a Savior and that His name is Jesus Christ and that He died on the cross of Calvary for you. It's because of His mercies. The mercies of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God expressed in these, in these three ways. It is because of His mercies that you're still standing. It's because of His mercies that you're still alive. It's because of His mercies that you're not in prison. It's because of His mercies that you are still able to hear. It is because of His mercies that He's allowing you to see and hear this video today or whatever day it is that you see and hear this video. It's because of His mercies, because He's giving you an opportunity to hear the good news of salvation. He's giving you an opportunity to hear that He loves you and that He wants to come into your heart and your life and be your Lord and your Savior and help you to walk out this life. He wants to save you from eternal damnation and from hell. So that on that day that we are all going to have, when our soul, our spirit leaves us on that day of your death, you, instead of going to eternal, unspeakable torture in hell, will be going to eternal, wondrous existence with the Lord in heaven. It's because of His mercies. It's because of His mercies that you, who maybe at one time served the Lord, but have walked away for whatever reasons, it's because of His mercies that you and your rebellion have not been consumed. It's because of His mercies that He has given you also. Because the Word says that God is married to the backslider. It is because of you that He is restraining His hand and extending mercy to you, giving you an opportunity to come to yourself again, to come to your senses again, and to, like the prodigal son, return to the Father, return to Christ. Oh, I praise you, Lord. Verse 24 tells us, The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in Him. When we hope in something, people, we are confiding in it. We are in expectancy of it. We are, we who know the Lord live or should be living daily in an expectancy, in a hope of seeing His mercy, His grace, His love extended to us, of seeing Him move mightily in our lives, in our situations, in our difficulties. The prophet Jeremiah, to whom is ascribed the writing of the book of Lamentations as well as the book of Jeremiah, that precious prophet of God went through hell, let's just put it that way, on earth, in his zeal to fulfill his calling and to prophesy to Israel and to their leaders and to the people who were in a horrific state of rebellion and sin and idolatry and he suffered horribly at the hands of the leaders at that time because he was obedient to the Lord and spoke God's truth to power as the Spirit of the Lord gave him. He is the one who is saying, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. His hope 
was that at some point Israel would hear and obey and return to God and leave aside all their idolatry and all of their sexual sin and all the craziness that they were doing in rebellion against Almighty God. He was still hoping, as we also have cause to hope. Looking at and living in this sin-sick world, we still have the hope that people will come to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we must do the part that belongs to us, those of us who are serving the Lord, to bring this good news of salvation to those who don't know him. Verse 25 says, The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. God knows where you are. God knows your condition. Those of you who may have fallen away from the faith, but somewhere in your heart there is this little ember that's trying to reconnect with God. He's good to you that wait for him. He is good to the soul that seeks him. Even if that seeking, beloved, is just a tiny little ember in those of you who either have walked away, fallen away from the faith in Jesus Christ, or those of you who may not yet have professed faith in him, but you're seeking him because there's something in you, and it's the Spirit of the Lord quickening you, that is starting to think, I think there may be something to this. And you're starting to seek. The Lord will not disappoint you. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him and to the soul that seeks him. The word tells us that if you seek him, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart. If you, Meaning if you're seeking him sincerely, not just out of curiosity, but you're seeking him sincerely, you're going to find him. Because he wants to be found by you. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Hoping in God means trusting in Him, and when we trust in Him, we can quietly, meaning peacefully. Doesn't necessarily mean not speaking, but peacefully. We can peacefully, confidently wait on the Lord and wait for His salvation, meaning waiting for his deliverance, waiting for him to move in your life, waiting for the fulfillment of his, of his word. We can confidently, quietly, peacefully wait because we know <coughs> excuse me, that God will deliver. We know that God will deliver. 27 tells us it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. And 28 tells us, let him sit alone and keep silence, because God has laid it upon him. Those two verses are very interesting verses. There are times when God will lay a, a yoke on you. There are times when God will lay a burden on you, like he laid it on the prophet Jeremiah and the other prophets of old, and even modern day prophets. There are times when he will lay a burden on you, a yoke on you. But that yoke and that burden is not to flatten you. It's not to destroy you. Just like it wasn't to destroy the prophet Jeremiah. Many times when the Lord lays a burden or a yoke on us, it is because he has a plan and a purpose with us. And he wants to use us for his glory to admonish, to rebuke those who are in rebellion, those who have walked away from the Lord, but also to call to repentance those who do not yet know the Lord. We cannot, those of us who, who serve the Lord, don't ignore that yoke. Don't ignore that burden, especially when the Holy Spirit is letting you know that is a burden that's been laid on you by God himself because he wants to use you. The Lord is speaking to somebody today who has had a burden laid on their heart, laid on their spirit. It's a burden that has you sometimes 
Walking around feeling like you're gonna cry and you're not sure why. Feeling a sadness and you're not sure why. When you're feeling that, beloved, seek God's face. Seek the Lord about that. Because many times it is coming from a burden that God has laid on your heart, something he wants you to do, something he's calling you to do. And he is letting you know by that feeling in your heart. It's, I don't want to call it heaviness. It's like a little weight on your heart. And it can sometimes drive you to sadness. It can drive you to tears. But it is not for destruction. It's not for a negative purpose. It's for a positive purpose in the Lord. Because he wants to use you. He's laid something on you. And he wants to speak to you about this thing that he's laid on your heart. When you feel that, don't fear it. Or don't brush it away. And just say, yeah, I'm just having the blues. Or, oh, maybe I'm just feeling a little depressed. No, seek God's face. Because, yes, of course, there is such a thing as feeling the blues. And there is such a thing as depression. But for those of us who are in Christ, not that we don't get depressed sometimes. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that for those of us who serve the Lord, for those of us who are in the Lord, many times that burden is something God himself has laid on us, like verse 28 says. Laid by the Lord on your heart like he laid it on Jeremiah's. So much so that Jeremiah, there's, there's a portion of scripture in Jeremiah where, where Jeremiah is practically railing at the Lord. Because God laid this burden on him and he was prophesying the word of God to the people and just getting royal hell behind doing it. And he even said to the Lord, I'm not going to speak your word anymore. I am not going to speak your word anymore. I'm, I'm done. Yet he follows it with, because this is how the burden of the Lord is. But your word is like a fire. Oh, I feel God's presence. Shut up in my bones. And I can't keep silent. And when you feel that burden on your heart, and by the Holy Spirit, you know that somehow it's connected to God, don't ignore it. Don't brush it aside. Seek God's face. Because it could very well be that God has laid a burden on you because there is something he wants you to do. And you need to seek his face so that he can speak to you and reveal to you what that burden is, what is the purpose of that burden, and what he wants you to do with that burden. Because God doesn't lay burdens on us for no reason. When he puts a burden on, it, on you, it's because there is a purpose and a plan to that burden, and there is something he wants you to do with it. So don't ignore it. Seek his face. There is a world out there who doesn't know the Lord. There is a sin-sick world out there that is suffering and rolling down that hill toward hell. And they need to hear that it is because of the Lord's mercies that they are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. That it is because of his mercies that are new every morning. And so is his faithfulness. That God continues to give the backslidden and those who have not yet heard of Jesus. And those who are in the Lord and may not be walking the way that they should be. It is because of his mercies that you are not yet consumed. Because he has given you an opportunity to straighten up your walk with him. He is giving you an opportunity to repent. Those of you who don't know Christ, he's giving you an opportunity to come to him in repentance and confess your sins to him and receive him as Savior. Those of you who are backslidden, he is giving you an opportunity. He hasn't consumed you yet to give you an opportunity to come to your senses and to come back to Christ. And to those of you who are serving the Lord, but who are walking crooked and you think no one is seeing you, God is seeing you even if no one else is the holy spirit is seeing everywhere you go everything you say everything you think who you hang out with he is seeing it all 
and he has not consumed you because he is giving you oh praise you lord i praise you my god he's giving you the opportunity to get right he's giving you the opportunity to repent and to ask the holy spirit to help you to help you to to consecrate yourself to him that your walk would be sanctified and that you would be able to give a right testimony of the goodness of the Lord. That you would be able to give a right testimony to the world of how God saves and sanctifies and heals and justifies. And makes us new again through the blood of Jesus. And through the price that Christ paid on Calvary's cross for us. Oh, I, just, I feel this word in my spirit like I can't even describe to you. There are those listening today where this is your last chance. There are people listening either today, May 2nd of 2018, or who will be listening to this video at some other point, where at the point when you hear this word, it's your last chance. Because God doesn't contend with man forever. He gives us chances and he doesn't consume us and his faithfulness is great. But there are those, and this is a reality that people don't like to hear, but it is the truth. There comes a moment where it's like, this is your last chance to come back to me if you're backslidden. This is your last chance to receive me if you don't know the Lord. This is your last chance to get it right, to stop playing church and serve the God, serve God with a pure and clean heart and stop playing games and stop acting like you think you're fooling somebody when the only one you're fooling is yourself because God sees what you do. There are those where this is the final warning. Oh Lord. Have mercy, Father. There are those of you where this is your final word. Heed the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you today. And believe me, when you hear this, those of you for whom this is the final warning, you're going to know it. You're going to know it. In your heart, in your spirit, you're going to know it's directed to you. And I pray that when you hear it, you will heed it and you will come running back to the arms of Christ. Whether you've never known the Lord before, never confessed Him as your Savior, whether you are backslidden and the Lord is calling you, or whether you are someone who is a servant of God but you have allowed your walk with the Lord to become all kinds of sloppy. And it is grieving God's heart. Return. Repent and return. Repent and return. It is because of his mercies. Like it says in Lamentations 3. That you have not been consumed yet. He is giving you the opportunity. Because he's so merciful. Because he's so compassionate. Because he loves you so much. Because he paid such an enormous price. Through the death and the shedding of the blood of his precious only begotten son, Jesus, he is giving you another opportunity. And for some of you, a final warning to come to him. Come to Christ. He only wants to do you good. He wants you to come to him and to serve him. To do wondrous things in your life and through your life and to give you eternal life. In him won't you return those of you who walked away won't you return those of you who have never known him won't you come to the waters those living waters that Christ wants to give you when you become a follower of him won't you come those of you who are in Christ but have allowed your walk to fall apart come back Come back, come back. Those of you who don't know the Lord, and those of you who at one time were serving the Lord and have walked away, 
we're going to pray. This is the opportunity that the Lord is giving you. Those of you who don't know him to profess Christ, faith in Jesus Christ and those of you who once knew him and walked away to come back to the saving knowledge of Christ. Words don't save, but sincere faith in Christ does save. And I'm going to pray with you. And I want you to repeat this prayer with me out loud because with our mouth we confess salvation. Out loud. If you are able to. The most important thing is that you have a sincere and believing heart. Repeat this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you today in the mighty name of Jesus. I recognize and I confess that I am a sinner and that I need Jesus Christ to be my Savior. I ask your forgiveness, Lord, for all my sins. Please wash me in the precious blood shed by Christ on Calvary. Make me new. Make me whole. I receive you today, Lord Jesus, as my Savior. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, Welcome. Those of you who were backslidden, welcome back. Welcome back. And those of you who have come to saving knowledge of Christ for the first time in your life, welcome home. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. My email address is smolderingwithministry at gmail.com. That's smoldering, S, M as in Mary, O, L, D, E, R, I, N, G, Wick, W I C K, ministry, not ministries, ministry, M I N I S T R Y, smoldering wick ministry at gmail.com. If you prayed that prayer today, I want you to write to me. I want you to write to me and share with me this wondrous, wondrous thing that happened to you today. I will be praying for you. And if you need to find a church, I will do my level best to find you a good Bible-believing church in your area. But do write to me, because I want to know. I want to hear that wonderful, wonderful announcement that you have come home, that you have come to Christ. Until the next time that the Lord permits me to be able to share the word of the living God with you, this is your friend. Minister Lillian Cobles from Smoldering Wick Ministries. May God bless you. May God keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may he bless you richly every day of your life. Amen.